Okay, well, I'm really uh, pleased to be here, and it's been a, a very interesting, uh, interesting uh, conference from my point of view. I, um, was, this paper is about the U.S., and um, I was thinking a little bit about why is what I'm going to be talking about. How is it related to uh, to Asia, or at least my own work on Asia, which was mostly done like 20 years ago. Uh, and at that time, I was interested in the <clears throat> very rapid. Uh, decline in fertility and growth in education in, in, in Asia. And I connected it basically to the uh, very rapid economic development that was going on that was not only raising incomes, but it was really changing the, the kind of mix of skills that were being demanded in the labor market. And basically, people needed to become workers in, in Asia were needing to become more, more skilled. Parents were seeing, seeing that this needed to happen. They, they were uh, investing in their children. The fertility was coming down. Uh, women were starting to enter the labor market, starting to acquire new kinds of skills, and so on and so forth. So there's a real transformation of the uh, labor market. And, and in the process of transforming the labor market, there was a transformation of the kind of uh, things that people, people did and what the kind of skills they had and, and, and a, in a wide, wide or a broad aspect of, uh, of, of life. And in the current paper, what I want to do is talk about what the impact has been of computerization in, the, um, in, in this. And, it's a, and what I'm doing is I'm going to be building on uh, I'm going to be building on a line of work that's had an important, uh, has developed in, uh, importantly in the uh, last decade in, in uh, the U.S. on uh, the changes in the uh, changes in the kind of uh, jobs that people do in the U.S. The what's sometimes called the polarization of the uh, labor market, um, computerization and work by David Otter and, and others has shown that has been implicated as an important reason for the growing inequality in wages in the United States and the decline in middle skilled and middle class jobs. And so the way in which, uh, in which technology has changed, I think, is, is, is an interesting thing. Nobody, so far as I know, has really looked very much at what the implications are of this kind of thing for older workers. I think John mentioned paucity of information in, in, in Asia on, on this, but I think, I think it's really just not been studied much uh, anywhere. And so I'm going to really focus on, and suggest that uh, investment in uh, human capital is important even at older ages, and, and understanding that investment has some implications for what, uh, what, we, what we see in terms of uh, retirement behavior. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, studying the original health and retirement study cohort that was born between 1931 and 1941. Um, I was a member of that cohort, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so uh, so this is this is a little bit autobiographical. <laughs> the uh, the uh, uh, so the cohort of pe people, this cohort of people were 50, 51 to 61 years of age in 1992. They've been followed bi biannually uh, for 18 years uh, to 2010 when they were 69 to 79 years of age. HRS contains detailed information on, on three-digit occupations, which are very detailed level occupations. Uh, they're so detailed that we, uh, that we don't, uh, the HRS does not allow researchers to get access to these occupations unless they get restricted data because they might personally identify somebody. Um, uh, the, um, uh, in the public use part of the HRS, these are aggregated to 17 occupations. Uh, the, I'm also going to be linking these to another remarkable body of data which has uh, 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 started to attract a lot of interest by labor economists in occupation, which is a, which is a neglected part of labor economics, because econo labor economists basically didn't know what to do with occupation for a long time. And uh, the data I'm talking about is the so-called ONET data, which is previously the Dictionary of Occupational Titles. It's been compiled by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and it contains very detailed characterization of the occupations that have, and, I, and I've linked this data to, uh, to the HRS. So we know, we know in the ONET, 
at the th three-digit level, what are people supposed to be doing in various occupations and in, a, in a wide variety of dimensions? And I'm really going to only use the computerization d dimension in this work, but it's a potentially much richer uh, set of information uh, there. Uh, I want to thank my RA and often co-author <coughs> Peter Hudemet uh, for sharing his coding with, with me on, the, on this. The um, HRS also contains self-reports of occupational characteristics, and, uh, and uh, here I'm only going to use the computer intensity of an occupation, uh, but uh, future versions of, the, of this paper will explore richer, da richer data. So here's the autobiographical part. <laughs> the uh, source here you might notice is personal recollection. <laughs> uh, the, uh, <laughs> When uh, the uh, uh, cohort that we're studying has basically learned about computers, um, they learned it on the job. Computers didn't really come into uh, commercial application until until these people were these people were in their in their uh, late twenties or maybe early thirties, depending on which cohort they were in. The mainframes were introduced. Uh, if you look at uh, sort of when they were forty-one to fifty-one. That they were getting uh, many computers and personal computers came in and then the growth of the internet, but a lot of these people are out of the labor force by the time we get to smartphones and, and, and tablets. So, and, and essentially what this means is that their formal education did not, did not include the use of or introduction to computers. So I guess I want, I want you to keep that in mind. And I think, again, the... Um, application to some of the other topics that we've talked about, including the issues about the older people in Eastern Europe who were educated and acquired their experience in a world that's quite different than the transition world now is, is, is an example, and, and people, moving, people moving into kind of modern, the modern economy from rural areas is another kind of example where there's a lot of adaptation that has to take place. So the um, kind of part of the motivation for this is this growth, growth in inequality and job polarization. There's been growing inequality of wages since the mid 1970s in the U.S. And, and basically, what you can see is that low-skilled people, who are down down here, have tend to, the the people in the uh, bottom 10 percentile have had almost no no wage growth for two generations. <laughs> And, and there's been very rapid wage growth of, of the upper 10%. So there's just been this fanning out of wages, and that to some extent reflects uh, or is interpreted as, as really a change in the price of skill. <laughs> the skill has, has become uh, more, more, uh, uh, more important. Let's go the other direction. Oops. What am I doing wrong here? Okay, is that a touch? Yeah. I think I got it stuck here. Yeah, I try to make everything a part of the lesson. <laughs> uh, the um, <clears throat> So, so the other feature of this that Otter is, uh, uh, has uh, emphasized, is, and this is a graph drawn from a handbook of labor economics, or labor economics chapter by Asimoglu and Autor, is the so-called job polarization or hollowing out of middle-skilled middle -skilled jobs. And you can see, the, you can see that low-skilled or high-skilled jobs had very ra rapid growth in employment uh, over, the, <coughs> over these decades. And that, and some more stability in the uh, in the low skilled jobs over at this end, but in the middle skilled jobs, in, in sales and office administration, production operators and laborers had declines. And um, the uh, idea was uh, that, that was introduced by Otter is this is a sort of idea of uh, routinization. Can a computer program be written to, to do the tasks previously done by a human? And uh, we know that in a lot of middle skilled jobs, just think of somebody who, is, who went to college and learned to become a bookkeeper. Um, 
that person, that person uh, in my era would have had a job and would have been doing, doing a lot of things that uh, simply got replaced by what a computer could do. Um, and so computers substitute for those skills. At the, at the higher end, there's potential complementarity. The people in this room have benefited enormously in the research that they can do by, by computerization, by the hardware and software that's available. So you see all, all of these marvelous graphs that we've seen that would take weeks to do when, <laughs> when I was younger now can be done in seconds. The, um, on the, at the low end, uh, Otter argues the computer cannot replace human skills in many non-routine manual tasks, although that's changing to some extent. Uh, a security guard can, can recognize patterns and movement and things of this sort that a, that a machine as yet cannot do. Um, and can move physically in ways that uh, machines can't do very easily. Um, so, so, so just a few theoretical con considerations um, for work and uh, retirement decisions. Technological change causes obsolescence of skills. The computer, the, the computer and the software that I use this year is different than the one last year. If I'm going to use the one this year, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to learn. I'm going to have to learn new, new skills. So workers and their employers must continually invest in skills to prevent skill erosion. To make these investments, the incentive to work longer, there's an incentive to work longer to capture gains over a longer period of time. If I, if I make an investment now, the payoff to that investment depends on how, how much, how heavily, and how long I utilize that investment in the future. Uh, if I don't make investments, productivity falls, pressure, there's pressure to leave the job or to shift to another occupation. As the time horizon for retirement comes closer, the present value of an investment declines, and at some point, investment fails to offset obsolescence and productivity begins to fall. So the, so the effects of advances in computer technology differ depending on whether computers are complements or substitutes for occupational tasks. If they're complements, advances in increased labor productivity, increased incentives to invest and improve skills and delay retirement, their substitutes advances decrease labor productivity and reduce the incentive to invest in skills and hasten exit for the, from the labor force. Now, the, 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 now I want to switch to the data that I'm going to be using. So this is the HRS cohort who were, as I said, 51 to 61 years of age in 1992. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, thinking of a dependent variable here, which is a trichotomous variable. It's going to be they're either working full time, they're partially retired or completely retired, and I'm going to select a sample of people who, in, who at the baseline of the, of the HRS were fully working, or completely working, so 100% of them, we, look, oops, if we uh, look over at uh, here, you can see everybody was working, and then this, this shows the fractions that are that are still working, that's declining, and, and, and so forth. I'll show this graphically, so I won't dwell on this. But So there are going to be three outcomes that I'm going to be studying. Uh, I'm going to have some explanatory variables, including computerization and some cognition. Uh, computerized occupations at, uh, 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 at baseline, I'm going to uh, uh, use the ONET. And the ONET uh, provides information on the importance and level of required work activity. Uh, and the coding is following some work that uh, uh, is in a paper that's uh, used this kind of information to look at the changes in the wage structure by uh, Herpo, Fortin, and uh, Lemieux. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be, uh, uh, I have information, I'm going to be using whether they used computers that work at baseline and self-report, and I'm first going to compare the self-reports to the ONET reports. It's important to recognize that the ONET is a, char is a characteri characterization of an o occupation that doesn't have a time series structure. So the, so the occupation that used, somebody in an occupation that used computers a lot, uh, it could be inaccurate for, for some occupations that didn't use computers initially and then switched to them. But it also kind of captures the notion that if you're in an occupation that uses computers, the secretary who used a computer in, uh, in uh, 
1980 was using a quite different computer than the one who's using the computer in, in uh, 2000 or in 2010 and so forth. The, um, uh, I'm also going to have uh, an occupational wage at baseline, that is what was the mean wage of people in the occupation, it will be an indication of the skill, kind of overall skill level in that occupation. I'm going to be using a measure of cognition in uh, 1992 that's a 27 point scale that uh, is composed of uh, a memory score and some other, some other scores that, have, that measure uh, cognition. For this purpose it would be nicer if I had the number series measure that uh, that uh, David talked about in the, this morning, which is a measure of fluid intelligence, and kind of, which is a kind of capacity to learn in an unfamiliar situation, but that is not available as a, as a, as a long-term measure. Um, this is sort of, this is sort of a, uh, a, uh, a graph that sort of shows that the, this computer, uh, there are kind of, uh, 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 two, two groups of things here, which is the computer's uh, uh, degree of occupation, excuse me, the, the degree that an occupation is computerized uh, related to the self-report. So the, so the blue line here, blue density is sort of where, where people said in the HRS in 1992 that they used a computer most of the time. <laughs> This is what they, uh, th th these are the occupations according to ONET that are, that are, that are there that are pretty, have a pretty high value in the ONET index that I, that I des described. People who say they used computers sometimes or never are sort of scattered around, around over here and, and, and so forth. So there's, there's, a, there's a considerable concordance between, between what's in the self-report and, and what is in the, is in the ONET data. Uh, there's a, another set of control variables, which is, uh, includes things about health, and marriage, uh, age at baseline, uh, sex, uh, 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 education, and log earnings at, at baseline. And baseline, I mean 1992 when they were first inter interviewed. The econometric framework is, is a pretty simple one. I use an ordered probit model with three outcomes, work partially retired or uh, completely retired. Partial and full retirement are competing risks. I could do one or the other. Um, conventional survival models treat competing risks as independent, which makes no sense in this case. An alternative is to use an ordered probit model, which makes the polar opposite assumption that the error term here is one-dimensional, and it's just, just moving it up and down. Uh, uh, giving, if it's a real high value, it, you work full time. If it's an intermediate value, you would work part time. And if it's uh, real low, you'd uh, get out of work altogether and retire. Coefficients of the variables with a positive effect on work have a negative sign. Um, and the repeated in, in, in observations for individuals are treated as a cluster. And since individual transitions and retirement status are not modeled, the data might be regarded as kind of a repeated cross section. Um, and, uh, and I use a <coughs> common parameterization of age, which is this equation, but I'll just show you the implications of it. So, so basically, if you just put age into age in a, in a functional form that has, has age, in, age squared and age is at least 62 and age is at least 65, the 62 is the earliest age at which people can claim Social Security, and there's a big spike in retirement at age 62, and there's a second spike, smaller one at age 65, which used to be the early claiming age. And if you if you do if you do that, you see you fit this kind of you fit this kind of a function. So working working falls like this. It falls steeply at age 62. It falls again somewhat steeply at age 65 and goes down down so that uh, only about five, five or 10 percent of people are still working at, at age 80 here. Um, fully retired goes sort of in the opposite direction up here. And then there's this partial retirement uh, thing, which is, a, which is a kind of complicated and amorphous, amorphous uh, deal. That is, some people are going to enter retirement in a gradual way, uh, with partial, be partially retired 
uh, and then and then become fully retired retired later on. And what I'm doing is simply observing what state they're in at uh, each of these subsequent ages after after baseline. Uh, so so I got a bunch of control variables, and I'm not going to go through go through here uh, saying other than just note what are, what are the bullets over here on the side, that health has a very strong effect on, on retirement. Health here is measured as subjective, subjective health. Um, the uh, education, only the college degree is significant. And log earnings at baseline have a strong positive effect on, uh, on retirement. The uh, effects of computerization, the computer intensity of an occupation promotes retirement. So one can see this is sort of a first regression where, where I put in, I put in, uh, uh, this is this, uh, this is the uh, age only, or this has just got cognition at baseline, which is uh, uh, promoting, promoting work. And, uh, and it, it uh, is significant and, and uh, has, has in higher cognition uh, later on, conditional and initial cognition also promotes work. If I put in a computerized occupation, it has a, uh, Pretty strong, strongly uh, uh, retirement uh, promoting coefficient, and uh, and uh, uh, cognition, and and uh, if I put an occupational wage, it has a, a work promoting promoting effect. If I put them both in, you see that they work in opposite directions, and the effect of computerization becomes even stronger when I control for the for the occupational wage. Um, the uh, I want to now go into a little bit more detail about some of the some of this stuff. And and first, one I want to look at is sort of the male male female differences. Why might we expect a male female difference in in this? Females in computer intensive occupations are concentrated in clerical and administrative jobs. With women in the HRS cohort entered the labor force after childbearing largely without computer skills and had to learn on the job. Uh, they're competing, when they went, entered the labor force, they were competing with younger computer savvy workers. So there was, there was, there's quite a bit of substitution there and there's relatively little, little monetary payoff to maintain your improving skills as computer technology advances. These are jobs that don't have really steep age earnings profiles. Um, the, uh, uh, late career middle skilled males in computerized occupations face similar conditions to those described for women. Competition from younger computer sa savvy workers, computers substituting for tasks that they used to do. Uh, in late career, high skilled males whose skills are complemented by advances in computer technology are less, are less likely to be pushed into re retirement. So we might think that there's some difference in the effects of these depending on different uh, kinds of occupations. There's also a great deal of occupational segregation by gender. You can see, for example, that in uh, like health services, the percent female here is about 95 percent. We have, and, and it just vary, varies a lot. So there's a lot of a lot of difference in the kinds of jobs that men and women are doing uh, at different levels of computerization. Uh, so, uh, if we look, just separating, oops, yeah, separating the uh, men and the men and the women, you see that the coefficient for women on computerized occupations is about twice as big as it is, twice as big as it is for men. So, being in a computerized o occupation is pushing women out faster than it is than it is for men. Uh, it's uh, notable that the occupational wage, well, excuse me, that the um, uh, marriage uh, at baseline uh, is uh, encouraging work for, for men and compared to singles and discouraging work for, for women compared to, to singles. Here's, uh, here's sort of the most uh, comprehensive thing I've done so far in terms of these effects where I've interacted the computerization variable with single year of age for, for men and for women. And uh, if you look at this, you can see that for women, 
there's a quite strongly significant effect all that's there in the yellow here uh, that operates that operates sort of at every age. At every age, the uh, computerization is pushing tends to be pushing women out of the out of the labor market. For men, there's a very similar effect prior to age 62. Remember, there's this big retirement spike that occurs at age age 62, which is the earliest age for for um, um, for uh, uh, retiring or for, for claiming Social Security. Uh, but after age 62, there's, there's really a big drop here. That, that is, the men, men who go past age 62 in computerized occupations actually, in terms of the point estimate, although it's not significant, uh, are actually more likely to continue working. And, uh, and there's really quite a, quite a big difference. And, and this sort of suggests and, and requires more, more empirical work and perhaps some more theor a little bit more theoretical thinking as well, is that, uh, is the, uh, that uh, these men are more suggestive of the high-skilled, maybe high-skilled people who, where computers are complementing their skills um, and, uh, and provide an incentive to stay and work longer. Whereas for the others, they're more substituting for skills and, they're, and uh, tending to get out of work later. Now, I just want to move to the, oops, to the conclusion here. So the, so the conclusions are that the theory predicts that workers in occupations with rapidly advancing technology will retire earlier. Computerization is a prime case of a ubiquitous, rapidly t changing Technology and a more, but a more nuanced theory is pro proposed by Otter, suggesting that computers substitute for the task done by many middle skilled workers, thus reinforcing the work, dis the work disincentive of uh, computerization uh, and complement the capacity of high skilled cognitive occupations, thus encouraging both investment and delay of retirement in order to capture returns from these investments. And uh, I find strong support for these theoretical ideas and the empirical results from the analysis of the retirement behavior of the 1992 cohort over the next 18 years. Uh, computerization has a highly significant effect pushing women and some men to retire before age 62. It appears that other men are not pushed into retirement by computerization. In future revisions of this paper, I'm intending to use more of the rich ONET data to test the hypothesis that computers substitute for tasks done by the former group and complement the tasks of the larger group. And uh, finally, it seems possible that the retirement-inducing effects that, I, that I'm showing here of computerization will decrease as new cohorts approach retirement because these cohorts will have become familiar with computers from an earlier age. On the other hand, the heavy cognitive demands of non-routinizable work may induce people to choose less demanding occupations and less demanding educational programs earlier in their life. And that's really this polarization that, uh, that Otter has and, and, and others have, em has em have emphasized. And these, to the extent that happens, these people may not be well positioned to take advantage of the, adva of the advances. So, um, so I, think, I think one of the interesting things will be how much how much of what I'm showing here is kind of the, the effects of a, of a unique cohort <laughs> that entered before computers came in, and, and, and will these relationships stay the same for future cohorts? Now, given that, I, that, that I'm in the midst of a, a conference that's dealing with Asia and dealing with, uh, with these things, I think that it would be, one could sort of say some of the same issues are coming up in, in, in Asia, we have, a, we have older cohorts that were very poorly educated, educated oftentimes under different economic systems than the systems that are in place now with quite different kinds of, uh, kinds of things. The uh, uh, question will be how, how, do, the, how, do, pe how do people uh, deal with this? Will, will the, uh, I, I can still remember when I first studied Taiwan riding on a plane with a person who had been reared in a rural area in Taiwan <laughs> and uh, ended, up, ended up being an owner of a factory. <laughs> there was a fairly high-tech factory, and I thought, my God, over, the, over this one person's lifetime, the, the technologies that he was dealing with had totally changed 
and, and, and so forth. So I think there's a lot, of, a lot of interest in sort of understanding how these different cohorts are going to be, uh, are going to be adapting to this, uh, these uh, changes. So let me stop there. Thank you. Questions? Okay, so, 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 so I guess what I would say, this would actually be an aspect of this point I was trying to make at the very end, and that is that uh, in this particular cohort, women came into the labor force for the most part after their children had, had been reared. They tended not to be in, in occupations like engineering or, or uh, other uh, kinds of occupations that were high, both high skilled and had high high computer high levels of computerization. If you looked at women now in in uh, in uh, the United States, they're uh, uh, they're now getting more education than men are. They're, they're, uh, many of them are entering into the more into more technical technical kinds of uh, uh, of jobs and so forth. So the so. If you looked in this cohort, I don't think that our sample size would be sufficient of the highly skilled women who are in computer intensive occupations to really identify this kind of effect. I think they're almost all men at that. If we were looking at later cohorts, um, uh, that, that might, might really change. And uh, uh, in terms of looking at actual retirement behavior, we're going to have to wait a little bit. I've got a project that I'm going to be uh, starting on where we can look at uh, subjective expectations of retirement in which you can actually look into the future uh, that seem to be pretty reliable predictors of, of, of this and, and uh, of, of what, when people act, people's actual retirement behavior. In that case, we might be able to see cohort differences. In, in, in the... Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I guess I expect you to interact the computerization uh, variable with uh, education just to test this idea of complementary. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a number of things that I that I uh, that I want to do, and I didn't I didn't do yet. But that that would be a good idea. We can also interact. We could interact it with uh, uh, with the occupational wage variable, which would be another skill indicator. Um, and uh, and uh, one could use one could use some other. The ONET also has a, a wide variety of kinds of, of, of variables that one could one could look into. Uh, you know, for example, how how much uh, abstract reasoning is used in your job, how much computation is you know how much you need to know about math in your job, and a variety of things of that sort. Jim. That's actually a, that's a very that's a very good idea, and I think that we might be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Just, just to introduce a, a factoid. Uh, in twenty a factoid in yeah. twenty eleven, uh, there were twenty four million children in the U S. using the internet versus sixty million in China. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's a future study of this sort. Um, you may see some radical uh, you know, segmentation uh, between uh, China and the rest of the world, Asia. Yeah, I think the, yeah, the, the, the uh, Asia was adapting things very, very rapidly back when I was writing in the 80s on, 
and they've continued <laughs> continued on that path. Yeah. Yes. So, like, I'm very interested in your research. I like to have two kind of short comments or suggestions or questions. One is uh, is about the, like supply side. So, like, there's us blue and, and these people working on that. So, so you have your research emphasizing like you know. So, given this kind of computerization trend, what's it given? What what, what, what affects the demand for different types of works? But on the other hand, this literature also talks about you know, the supply side. So as people get higher and higher educated and more have higher computer skills, then the technology is going to move in a direction that you tend to use the computer more intensely. So in other words, that will increase the supply in the of those of those highly educated people. That could create another force, like competing uh, force. So basically, make the old eight people feel kind of more, you know, the more people can keep with the yeah, that that that's actually something that you know I kind of mentioned verbally, but it's but it, but I think it really should be brought out more explicitly, and that is this the uh, kind of co the the competition across cohorts because of the the substitutab substitutability of of younger of younger people who, in some sense, uh, acquire any given level of skill more cheaply <laughs> because they've, of their increased exposure and experience with the. Than, than with older people. That. So my, my second, like, is related to the, the question raised earlier. So it's about comparison, for example, of China vis-a-vis -vis the more developed countries. So I guess it's, it's, it's the job sort of occupation characteristics in terms of uh, computer skill in Europe might be related to the structural change in the sense that you know, the U.S. is now mainly service-dominant economy, where China is still like, industrializing. Mm -hmm. So the the, the 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 rise of the service economy in the United States might you know make the whole economy geared toward more like uh, computerized right. sort of occupations because the, the women are more likely to participate in the service sector. But China is still in that process and that has achieved that. So maybe that is also one way that could be uh, introduce that into a regression could be just increasing. Uh, incorporate one expert, uh, explanatory variable that is, you know, service, uh, service sector sh information for the, the yeah, although, although I've, I've heard the observation, I know, I mean, one, we might be able to look into it a little bit more with the HRS data, but maybe data on younger people would be better, that, better for this, and that is that there are a number of what we would normally call blue-collar jobs that are, have grown in, in, with increasing amounts of computerization. So, for example, ro the use of robotics and how that, <laughs> how that gets implemented in a, in a, in a factory may, may increase the, you know, kind of skill requirements that uh, that uh, blue collar workers may need to uh, have as well. So it may not all be all be services, but I think that, that services surely dominate. Okay, one more question and then we'll turn to the... Uh, you mentioned probably the cohort world in the 30s is the unique in that experience you yeah. described. But if I tell it right, the cohort world in the 40s, right now it uh, has at least 65 age. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they, most of them reach 62 as well. So there should be a way to probably to repeat yeah. the exercise and see yeah. if there is a between cohort world. Yeah, no, that's sort of the next step. The, um, in the HRS, it turns out that the original HRS cohort that was in 1992 was quite a large cohort. And uh, you could follow them for a long time. The next cohort that are, that HRS adds a new cohort of six-year six -year cohort every six years. And the next cohort up was relatively small. And then the cohorts after that, there were a new cohort introduced in 2004 and another one in 2010. And uh, and they're they're really kind of too young to be be going through this. So so the degree to which you can use actual retirement as your left hand side variable for the moment is is kind of limited because of the of the of, of this. But uh, and that's why I mentioned that that kind of another next step on this research is to bring in. We ask people what's the subjective probability that you'll be working full time at age 62 and at age 65, and that's forward looking. And that's turned out to be, for example, in the United States has had a uh, monotonically declining age of retirement for men 
from the late 19th century until, until about the until about the mid 1990s, and then that turned that that is turned around, and and the HRS ex, uh, work expectation variables uh, tracked that before, and, and you could see that before it actually happened. So, so the so so I think this so I think the subjective probability variables may be quite useful in looking at at the cohort differences because I think those are pretty interesting. In the, Cohort, you, they're not old enough to sort of look at a placebo type test to see if computerization mattered more for this group relative to the next. Well, you, I mean, you could. I mean, you could sort of. I don't know. Um, I suppose a complicated. Well, I don't know. Uh, it, it's yeah. It would be a little. It would be a little bit. It would be a little bit complicated. You could distinguish between the. Youngsters in that group, like me, and the oldsters, like Gary Becker, who was sort of. <laughs> <laughs>